I'm lucky enough to be joined today by Matt from Concord Dawn, usually spending your time in Austria, eh? Yeah, but, but I pop down here as often as I can. <laughs> Choice. And uh, you played, uh, you've played, you been playing a few gigs around the place. I know you played um, that show in Auckland uh, about a week or so ago at the platform. Yeah, first time there. It's a new space. I think it's been open about a month or so. Yeah. So it was good to get in there and try and, you know, break everything and make a mess. And <laughs> How did you find it? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's always a bit weird. Um, drum and bass often tends to have like one home in Auckland at a point mm -hmm. in time. Um, sometimes two, yeah. but you know, as compared to like, I don't know, house music or rock music, which can be spread around a bit more, it tends to have a sort of spiritual home, but that's it now. Mm. So it's always going to be interesting going there for the first time, but it seems to be good. I mean, I've been talking um, on Endzone uh, and with a couple of other interviews with the, also the State of Mind guys, but how it seems that a lot of drama based venues are shutting down. Are you, are you finding that? Um, well, I don't really know because I'm only really back here twice a year. Right, yeah. And there's always somewhere for me to play. Okay, well, that's lucky then, eh? So, I mean, but they're <laughs> here all the time, so maybe they know these, they probably know more about these things than I do. You've got like uh, Sandwiches in Wellington that's gone, and there's one in Christchurch, I think, Ministry that's gone, and then uh, Coherence that used to be up on K Road, and then Phil and Zen is gone. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a little odd because, I mean, drum and bass is probably as big as it's ever been right. um, in New Zealand at the moment. Mm. But yeah, I mean, a lot of those things are circumstantial too, like there's um, like earthquake stuff involved with like both sandwiches yeah. and um, ministry. Fair enough, yeah. And um, you know, all these all these things will add up. Well, I was going to ask what it's like then uh, overseas at the moment, like uh, just going stronger as ever? Yeah, I mean, um, different sub flavours of within drum and bass, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's like our rock music's been around for a really long time now, but um, you know, there's... I don't know, maybe psychedelic rock isn't as big as it used to be. Totally, already. totally, it comes away. So you've got that real kind of MGMT electric sound that's coming through and dirty old rock isn't really as that's prominent, it. I guess, So there's the little, little sub flavours kind mm -hmm. of coming to the rise and stuff, but all in all, this thing's really healthy. And awesome. um, you always sort of find, you know, at one point in time, maybe people are digging you more in Spain, and so there'll be a year when you get to Spain five or six times. Yeah, right. And then other years you'll go to Russia six or seven times, and just depends on where the wind's blowing, I guess. Talking about like then sub flavours as such, how does it work with you when you're writing? Like, do you find that you kind of bring in little bits here and there, or you still stay with the same kind of idea? Or what's been happening with no, Concord Dawn lately? No, I've kind of been all over the place. Like um, Moonlighting, which was the last single, was kind mm -hmm. of a disco track, mm -hmm. and that's not even something that's particularly fashionable or anything. I just always wanted to make a disco kind of drum and bass track. Yeah, wicked. So I did. Well, um, tell me about this track with uh, Tal moonlighting uh, how did that come about like are you doing that thing as where you uh, you know email back and forth and it's done over the internet being in Austria yeah well it wasn't even so much back and forth um, I okay. mean I've always wanted to work with her she's yeah. you know she's been around for ages and all that but you know for a very long time she had an exclusive deal with um, uh, Full Cycle and Ronnie Size and that whole crew yeah so no one was allowed anywhere um, near her right. yeah now that that's expired and she's back in New Zealand doing her own stuff and working on different projects, it's possible. And she'd done some stuff with Trey, a friend of mine uh, from Wellington, and I thought it sounded really cool, so I was like, let's do something together. And Choice. So we did, but in terms of backwards and forwards, I pretty much wrote most of a track, well, pretty much the whole track, and then yeah. I sent it to her, and then she did all the vocals, and then she sent it back to me, and I finished it off. So, so easy. Yeah. It was a very short game of tennis. That's so cool. Yeah. Are you still working with um, Nina McSweeney as well, that you've done some work with her in the past? Not on drum and bass stuff, but we have a whole new project, uh, just the two of us. Get out of here, really? Yeah, it's based on um, erotic horror movies from Italy in the 1970s. <laughs> 60s, <laughs> this 70s is true? and 80s. Is this, true? this is true, yeah, they're called giallo movies. Amazing. Um, they're a whole subgenre. Um, usually a masked killer. Yeah. Um, mostly stabbings, but sometimes stranglings or garrottings. Yep. And usually scantily clad, sort of uh, beautiful totally. victim. Nightgown and stuff being all like tight. Like that, yeah. Yes. Pretty much, you Just know like what I'm that. talking about. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like a cross between that and like early Wu Tang Clan and sort of Portishead, I guess. <laughs> so it's kind of trip hoppy. This sounds Very amazing. Have you got a, a name, or like a, a title? At the moment, it's tentatively called Giallo, which is the name of the genre. Mm -hmm. I'm very much looking forward to this. I don't think you can almost like make that up if you tried. It's awesome. No, that would have been an elaborate lie, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, we're going to go and check out the video clip for Moonlighting, but before we do, um, you are going to be coming back as well for a few shows? Yeah, I mean, I already missed, uh, already thinking about New Zealand, I'm starting to miss it already. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to come back at the end of the year, um, do Northern Base on the 30th, something Choice. that uh, I will tell you about later on the 31st. Okay, so uh, we can't disclose this yet, obviously? No, and okay. I'll be around, you know, there's already a couple of festivals, sort of uh, beginning of March and things, so things are starting to... Cool. The calendar fills up next year already, it's a bit yeah. scary.
Man, it's, you've got to work in advance these days, though, you know. Cool. All right, well, thank you very much, Matt, for coming in. Thanks for having me. And uh, enjoy the flight back to Austria. We're going to go check out right here. Oh, but before we do, uh, EP coming out. Yeah, that's going to be out in about ooh, six or seven weeks, depending roughly on when this airs and exactly when it's all finished. But <laughs> roughly um, sort of September-ish. We'll keep an eye out on Facebook page, perhaps? Yeah, Facebook. I'd tell people what's happening there. And Brilliant. Okay, I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you. And here it is. It's Moonlighting featuring Tali.